work backwards and and see and, and for for everyone to see what ASEAN is trying to do in order to uh, address the future, uh, to create a future that is more in line with the vision that we have all for uh, that we have for uh, our region. And then along the way, uh, I, I will endeavor to try to provide very concrete examples of uh, what we are doing in ASEAN in response to those things that we see are very needed uh, in, in creating the future that we all want for the region. So based on different um, articles, literature, and, and projections on the prospects or outlook for ASEAN in 2050, some of them have been presented a while ago by our speaker on social protection, um, more than 50% of the population by 2050 would be living in cities, urban areas in all of ASEAN. At the moment, there are already three countries where more than 70% of the population are living in cities. Uh, more than half of the ASEAN member states would have qualified already as aged societies, and some would already demonstrate decline in their population. Uh, we also anticipate a remarkably different world of work by then uh, with the Industry 4.0, the rise of artificial intelligence, robotics, and the Internet of Things. There's a lot of um, uh, tension or, or anxiety whether these new developments will be robbing our people of work or will be you know, robots replacing our people in, in, the, in the world of work. Uh, we also project a continued rise in labor migration, especially uh, dominated by the low and medium skilled labor. So despite what we are already doing now in ASEAN when it comes to um, mutual recognition agreements limited to uh, eight professions, uh, which was you know, accurately mentioned that only covers about 1.5% of the population, the labor migration will not be abated <coughs> over time and it will continue in, in those low and medium skilled sector. Uh, there's also a study done uh, with our partners uh, in collaboration with ASEAN saying that the benefits of the ASEAN economic community will be uneven among countries and more so uneven between men and women. So that's the projection ahead. So it's, it's uh, women stand to benefit less than men in the ASEAN economic community. And uh, as rightly pointed out, uh, ASEAN is a uh, uh, well poised to become uh, uh, an economic powerhouse globally, uh, but but this uh, is contingent on the maintenance of peace and security in the region. And uh, in the long run, we also foresee that there will be more extreme climate events and uh, increased vulnerability of our peoples and our region to disasters and other risks, uh, including non-traditional security threats with the rise of violent extremism. And um, of course, there's a, we, despite all this, we still see the rise of uh, the burgeoning of the middle class. So with, with this uh, outlook in mind uh, over the next 30 years, is this something that uh, ASEAN is comfortable just you know, accepting as a reality or is it something that you know, we're happy about or we're, we're not happy with this and we want to do something about this. So let me just uh, try to uh, tell you how ASEAN is uh, envisioning uh, the region over the next uh, decade and what we are doing right now and uh, our uh, plan things ahead to address this. So some of the things that I mentioned before are just you know, realities. Some of them are really inevitable, like you know, climate issues, uh, disaster risk, um, the developments in technology, um, the industry 4.0. However, many of these are also uh, manageable, can be mitigated, can be addressed. And then so therefore what ASEAN would like to do is to uh, leverage on its strength and align uh, with major stakeholders in the region and globally as well. So this year's theme of the Philippines of uh, partnering for change, engaging the world, aptly captures what ASEAN uh, adopts as a core strategy in moving forward. ASEAN uh, explicitly stated its complementarity with the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. So what we are doing over the last two years has been looking at alignments between the ASEAN Vision 2025 as well as the Sustainable Development Goals. We want to maximize resources 
we want to optimize the impacts of what we're doing in terms of creating the change we need at the national level as well as creating opportunities at the regional level to address the common aspirations stated in both ASEAN Vision 2025 as well as the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we've seen this uh, development since the last two years. Uh, we've covered many aspects of SDGs, including social protection as well, because it's one of the, uh, the, the goals and targets in the SDGs. So as a core strategy, ASEAN has created more open platforms and is continuing to expand these platforms of engagement with stakeholders, not only with the region, but international partners as well. As many of you would have known already, ASEAN maintains dialogue partner relationships with uh, 10 countries uh, outside the region, and uh, I think about over 80 other countries are planning to engage with ASEAN, not only on trade matters, but also to partner with us on social cultural concerns. Like we have very new uh, sectoral partnerships, say with Switzerland. They'd like to help ASEAN increase its capacities when it comes to technical, vocational education and training. So there are many other countries uh, exploring partnerships with ASEAN besides economic uh, concerns. ASEAN also continues to invest in its institutional strengthening. Um, just a week ago, we, we came into, we, I, I attended a conference comparing where, where uh, in one of the presentations it compared ASEAN versus the EU. The ASEAN Secretariat only has about slightly over 300 people. The EU Commission has over 33,000 employees, staff, you know, managing the affairs of the European Union. So can you imagine, you know, in, in terms of uh, capacity, institutional uh, capacity uh, be between ASEAN and EU, it's, it's really, you know, uh, not even comparable. So that's why the, uh, ASEAN is acutely aware of these limitations and therefore the ASEAN is continuously looking into, uh, looking inward and looking at how it can further strengthen itself while it's at the same time ensuring that there is ASEAN centrality. That whatever happens in this region, you know, ASEAN as a group uh, is at the driver's seat and dictating our own future. Now, um, we know we have, uh, we have taken note of all the challenges and ASEAN is fully cognizant of these realities. And um, we're also very aware of our limitations. You know, annually, uh, the, the contributions of ASEAN member states to operate the ASEAN Secretariat is only less than 20 million a year. That's the combined contribution. So can you imagine that cost going into the so many things that we want ASEAN to do for us? On so many projects. So a lot of the things that we are doing, or the projects that ASEAN has been collaborating on, many of them are actually supported by our dialogue partners, more than the money coming from ASEAN member states. And uh, as much as I want to share with you the many uh, documents or instruments articulating the high level political commitment of our heads of states in addressing these issues, uh, I'd like to share more on what we are doing in uh, addressing some of the points that were raised a while ago. For example, on ASEAN citizenship. Uh, a, a very strong ingredient for us to have this ASEAN citizenship is, you know, for the people, for the ordinary people to feel the benefits of ASEAN, to understand how ASEAN is actually impacting their lives. For example, uh, for an ordinary student, uh, it would be important for that student to learn uh, 21st century skills, to have access to high quality education, and hopefully not only limited within the confines of uh, his or her own, own country, but be exposed as, uh, as well to the, uh, to the ASEAN neighbors or even beyond ASEAN. And this is uh, one reality that we are trying to accomplish for ASEAN. Uh, it's been how many years already that ASEAN has embarked on developing quality assurance systems. We need to establish trust among our educational institutions that whenever one student would want to go to another school abroad, that whatever uh, uh, that person's uh, degrees or uh, obtained credits would be recognized abroad. And so that, that person will not be wasting time going abroad or you know, uh, extending unnecessarily the length of uh, time to study. ASEAN has also done the 
uh, qualifications reference framework. It's sort of a, 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 a reference by which ASEAN member states can compare each other's uh, qualifications at the national level. So that when a professional is uh, uh, created in one country, uh, another country who might employ this person would have a, a way of knowing what, what's the skill set this person has obtained and is this within the uh, qualifications or requirements needed in our setting. ASEAN has also uh, embarked on doing ASEAN credit transfer system. This is uh, the actual uh, online based system wherein students wanting to study elsewhere within ASEAN or even outside can check clearly <coughs> which credits would be you know, considered if ever they would be uh, engaged in mobility activities. Quite recently, ASEAN has also invested on uh, doing scholarships so that uh, students doing this mobility within the region can have an actual experience with support coming from that scholarship. You know, the, the only way for us to really uh, encourage students to go about move uh, around the region is to have some sponsorship for them or scholarships. And then as mentioned a while ago about the mutual recognition of payments, for the professionals already, uh, ASEAN has managed to uh, create the institutional setup needed to have a, a regional register, per se, uh, a, a register of architects within the region. So there are all those uh, mechanisms going on right now wherein people can, st can start exploring so that uh, the, the whole uh, say ecosystem to support the mobility of people, to, for them to better understand how ASEAN will benefit them through this uh, educational, you know, harmonized, inter internationalized uh, education system in the region uh, can be, you know, uh, can be filled. Another example would be uh, our many youth exchanges and uh, uh, youth forum. With the support of some of our dialogue partners, for example, Japan, they have a massive support given to our youth exchange programs. Thousands of ASEAN students have been going to Japan and you know, some of them are moving about in, in the region. So this way, you know, they, our youth would have an actual experience of a uh, uh, first-hand interactions with their fellow ASEAN, you know, uh, youth uh, in, in, in the region. Another example that we're trying, uh, we're uh, still uh, trying to operationalize is the, the recent declaration that ASEAN adopted. This is the ASEAN Declaration on Strengthening Education for Out-of-School Children and Youth. So while we are having all these, you know, programs and activities for those already in school, we do not, you know, leave out those that are not in school, and 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 this is right in line with our interest of having universal education in the region. So we don't leave out those that are uh, out of school. Um, in the economic community, we know that people talk about this a lot. And a while ago, I I, I mentioned how women would not be benefiting benefiting on equal terms with men. With men. So what we're doing now is to uh, look into the existing policy frameworks at the national and, and existing cooperation at the regional level on how women workers in ASEAN can be better protected. We all, uh, so we're doing this is two studies with support of some of our partners. So first is looking into the impact of the ASEAN economic community on women and the, the other one is looking at the impact of ASEAN economic community on women migrant workers. Uh, we also have a strengthened uh, collaboration with the ASEAN Women Entrepreneurs Network. So in ASEAN, we have this network of uh, women business councils, uh, regardless of size. You know, some of them can be very you know, uh, small and medium scale enterprises. And um, they are working hand in hand with the ASEAN Committee on Women, as well as the ASEAN Commission on the Protection and Promotion of the Rights of Women and Children. So there are several initiatives, one of which is uh, over the next two or three years, we want to mainstream gender in all the pillars of ASEAN. We are starting with ASEAN social cultural community now, but later on we want that there be more and uh, more aggressive initiatives so that our econom the economic community would have a gender lens and a gender perspective, making sure that women will not be left out 
in uh, economic development. We have been doing a lot of capacity building at the regional and national level when it comes to gender responsive budgeting, as well as working towards a gender responsive implementation of the sustainable development goals in ASEAN. And uh, recently, we're also close to uh, coming up with the regional guidelines on the creation uh, on the standards on collection of data for violence against women. So in, in terms of empowering women, we are looking at various aspects and dimensions of it, not only on the protection side, but more into the promotion side, integrating them with the, with the economy. And then lastly, uh, because I have very limited time left, on social protection. Um, uh, Director Saldi a while ago mentioned that uh, it was only over a week ago that we had this uh, high-level conference on social protection. So since the adoption of that declaration in 2013, followed by the adoption of the framework and action plan in 2015, we had an opportunity recently to reflect on what ASEAN has done in terms of uh, operationalizing the ASEAN Declaration on Social Protection. Uh, we've heard a lot of uh, very exciting developments going on, on uh, in social protection in the ASEAN member states in the areas of expanding coverage as well as deepening or increasing the, the benefit sizes of um, uh, social protection. Uh, and, and this goes uh, as well for old age pensions, universal health coverage, and even, non, uh, uh, even social security. There's a pipeline work on uh, doing a study on the portability of social security in ASEAN. So while it's meant for you know everyone in ASEAN, you can already imagine that it has the migrant workers at the back of its mind. Because over the long term, that would be you know, uh, a continuing interest in, in the region. Um, still on social protection, um, I, I think before this year ends or probably by, by mid next year, we hope to come up with the regional indicators and targets for strengthening social protection in ASEAN. Uh, the ASEAN member states believe that this is a, an important way uh, by which ASEAN, you know, the, the members can measure themselves against regional you know, norms and regional aspirations on social protection. Um, it will not be a regional target though, but it is more of like setting ambitions for each country in terms of realizing the goals of the social protection uh, declaration. What, what ASEAN does best is really to create that platform, that dialogue mechanism, wherein countries can learn from each other in terms of strengthening social protection in the region. We're very excited and, and pleased to learn that uh, because of all this work that we're doing on social protection, Myanmar is already adopting uh, a policy on social protection to strengthen uh, their national uh, framework. Lao PDR as well. So just knowing that some of our uh, CLMD neighbors are considering improving their social protection based on what they learned from other ASEAN countries uh, on, on this matter is also is already rewarding for us to know that uh, somehow what we do in ASEAN is influencing other countries to reconsider their policies or to improve their current uh, systems. So I'd like to end uh, with those and if you need more information, uh, you can just email the ASEAN Secretary and we'd be happy to provide more information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rodora. Uh, we were informed that uh, we have until uh, 3 p.m. for uh, our session because we uh, started uh, late. So it's now uh, 2.41. Uh, we have 20 minutes to go. I would like to open the floor for any questions or comments that you may have for any of our speakers and uh, discussant. Uh, just like this morning, we would ask you to uh, introduce your name and also state your affiliation. And the uh, microphone is there. In the middle. Yes, please. Um, my name is Nilo Pernasiu with Mindanao. I would like to address this question to Dr. Macaranas for some comments. Um, Dr. Macaranas ended his, um, his, his talk with uh, 
by citing some success stories about uh, globalization. Um, there are sectors, however, in how society that think that look at global.